Good morning. I'm trying to get my dribble right. We good. All right. Um, the murder of Malcolm X. I was still, I was still getting my dribble right. Excuse me. The murder of Malcolm X, man. Oh my goodness, bone chilling. Uh, I watched a couple of episodes last night. This is a topic that I'm very, very familiar with. I grew up asking certain questions about the murder of Malcolm X. I was born and raised in the Nation of Islam, so it's something that was always um, present. And by the time I started become, to become a young adult and started to read books about Malcolm X and get my own understanding of what might or might not have happened, um, I got some feelings about this. He said, Gully, what up? I ain't tuned in for a while. I've been working like a motherfucker. He said, I watched. You could tell the OGs in New Jersey don't want to talk about it. Nobody wants to talk about it. I got cussed out by my mother and grandmother before. Got cussed out by my mom and grandmother. Let me get the phone. I'm going to open the hotline up. Hotline is open. He said they jerk, jerk brother Malcolm. I was, um, I asked my mother about it. Um, I think around sixth grade, I might have did a book report on, um, on um, Alex Haley's book about Malcolm X, and I asked some questions. And um, I was, I definitely got the impression that it was a question that you weren't supposed to ask. But in the Nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad teaches that the only insignificant or dumb question is the one that you don't ask so i asked somebody about it and um <clears throat> that's just something that you don't ask people from the nation of islam <laughs> uh something happened last night that disturbed me that it shook me as soon as i seen his name as soon as i seen his name it made me sit up and pay more attention to the um documentary there's a guy associated with the murder of malcolm x named john ali his name has always been associated with the situation, always. Um, as long as I've been reading about it, I've always heard his name. I always heard that he was an informant, a federal informant. And they said on a documentary that they had three top-level informants in the nation at the time, meaning um, their informants would be the guys that would be actually in the room with Elijah Muhammad, Minister Farrakhan, Malcolm, and shit. So uh, I would... I would assume John Ali was one of them. His name has always been mentioned. Crazy how they let a dance happen hours after the shooting in the venue. Yeah, that was terrible. That was terrible. Um, anybody who's got a chance to check out this documentary, go ahead and call in, man. I'd love to hear from you. The hotline's posted, 814-455-2830. Good morning to everybody that's here. I've been busy. When y'all don't see me, I'm busy. I'm not, my approach to this media game, it ain't like everyone else. Um, cover every topic, upload. That My channel is different, and I'm going to keep it that way. Good morning to everybody. Dr. Henrik, Dr. Clark told Malcolm John Ali was a fed. Yeah, yeah. I'm disturbed that when I seen him, I'm like, ugh. As soon as I seen his name, I got a, a, a terrible feeling in the pit of my stomach, man. It was like, that's the devil right there. Like, what the fuck? Like, I shouldn't even feel like this. I'm way younger than these guys, but this is how he was announced to everyone for the last 30, 40 years and shit. He said, I got to watch, but I get in my feelings about, about stuff. You're definitely going to get in your feelings about this. Um, there was an element that was raised. There was a... There was an issue that was raised in the documentary that I never, ever, ever, ever thought about. I never thought about money. I never thought money about money playing a part in Malcolm X's assassination. Check this out. According to the documentary, which was well put together. Um, the Nation of Islam... A group that I grew up, you know, been, being a, a part of um, is a religious organization. And relig religious organizations don't have to pay taxes. 
So when they said that last night and shit, I was like, damn, I never thought about that. I never thought about that. And the reason why it was like, I'm like, damn, it's because I've been around the nation of all, all my life. I sold the bean pies. I sold the clean and fresh products. They called them the power products. The Nation of Islam was one of the first or organizations that had their own cosmetic line. Um, the newspaper that used to be called Muhammad Speaks is now called The Final Call. You got the newspaper. You got the bean pies. You got different uh, toiletries. And then you have... They passed the hat around. Um, they passed the hat around for donations. And then the members give, um, which is somewhat, I guess, Christians would call it paying a tithe, paying tithes. Uh, people in the Nation of Islam pay tithes too. It's called, well, I watched my mom pay tithes to the Nation of Islam most of my young life. And, um, I used to have a feeling about it that the, the tide that's paid is called the number two poor charity. Um, anybody that's watching this, they heard that t that term before, the number two poor charity. Um, I'm listening to it and I'm listening to how that shit was constructed. And um, Malcolm X was a straight shooter. Malcolm X believed in the Nation of Islam 100 percent. He was their most. He was Elijah's, Elijah Muhammad's um, most pre prestigious student. Um, he was a devout follower. And because of his favoritism, oh, it was revealed that Elijah Muhammad put Betty Shabazz, Malcolm X, put her through medical school. Malcolm X was favored, heavily favored um, by Elijah Muhammad, which would cause some jealousy and deviation with Elijah Muhammad's own children. Elijah Muhammad, I never knew that he had a bunch of, you know, children um, that were members of the nation as well. I think Wallace Dean was somebody that I knew about, but everyone else, I didn't know about these people. Um, these people, his immediate family would stand to benefit from the financial support provided by the nation of islam right anybody who opposed that anybody who opposed that would be an enemy and detrimental to the whole machine malcolm x started to say things like malcolm x basically started to paint a picture that the nation of islam wasn't real that um what someone would consider or the orthodox islam or sunni islam he, he he embraced and was exposed to that when he took his uh pilgrimage to mecca he returned his name was el Hajj malik shabazz malcolm x opposed uh there's a there's a there's a there's a, a law in the 48 laws of power says don't out never outshine the master there were several things in play that would cause Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X to fall up, fall out of favor with each other. Number one was never outshining the master. Um, according to the documentary and some things that I've read as well, Malcolm X was Malcolm X was was more gifted than Elijah Muhammad as a speaker. He was more gifted than Elijah Muhammad as a speaker. He served time. He had educated himself in the prison system. He came out, he was probably a little bit sharper. As far as being qualified, they said it in a documentary. He set up masjids all over the United States. Malcolm, Malcolm was the one traveling, hopping on planes and getting on trains, going to other cities, locking down corners and shit. So he had started to become the golden boy and when he made this rise in the nation of Islam, when he made this rise, rise, um, people noticed it. People noticed it, and essentially, he was rocking the boat. Um, when when money came into play, he was rocking the boat. Finally, he was silenced 
Um, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. People in America love John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy is a president who, who um, his name has always been mentioned as like a sympathizer for black people. I guess black people fuck with John F. Kennedy or something like that. Um, Elijah Muhammad warned Malcolm. Now, Malcolm had been saying shit about John F. Kennedy the whole time. He had been saying shit about him the whole time, but he was silenced. Malcolm X was silenced um, in regards to speaking about John F. Kennedy, and he complied. He stumbled during a Q&A after one of his speeches. Somebody asked him how did he feel about the assassination of John F. Kennedy. If he would have just said no comment, there's no telling how history would have went because that was the coup de grace. That's what got him killed. Disobeying that direct order, in my opinion anyway, disobeying that, that direct order not to speak on John F. Kennedy, he violated that. And anybody that know anything about the nation, they don't play games for real. Um, some of their, I don't know, some of the times when the nation has corrected someone, it's played out against black people. I, I got it. I have to mention that, too. Um, but it's well known that they will get down. So, um <clears throat> I have to answer a few questions. I'm going to tap back in on the topic in a minute because I watched it pretty thoroughly. I'm going to watch it again. Uh, pro, pro Malcolm X, you already know, before the, the documentary even came out. Um, black, gully blacks of the 60s like JFK because he signed the bill to end segregation. That would make him favored by black people. Malcolm X said some things. Um, he said it was karma. That's basically what he said. He said it was karma that got John F. Kennedy killed. He said the chickens came home to roost. He was saying that any energy that the United States has put out against other people, against the Indians, you know what I mean, against the Indians, the Native Americans, against black people, the karma, the energy will return. And that's what he said happened to John F. Kennedy. He could have, he, he probably should have kept that to himself. Who produced this documentary? I can't remember the brother's name. It's powerful. It's probably one of the po most powerful um, documentaries on TV right now. Another thing that um, I was told that Malcolm X didn't agree with um, a guy got killed in California. If I'm not mistaken, I forget his name. He got shot by the police in California. And Malcolm had, um, I think, either a relationship with the guy or knew him. Malcolm wanted to ride about that murder. Um, the by any means necessary that is um, mentioned, preached by the Nation of Islam, the retaliatory nature. Malcolm felt that they wasn't about that. When it when it came time to get down, he felt that they weren't really about that. And they were there were deviations that were coming into play. And then the FBI. The FBI made their play. They said last night on the documentary, when you hear COINTEL Pro, that's that's the same um program that was launched to destroy the Black Panthers, but whenever you hear that term, COINTELPRO, it is the government's code name for dirty tricks. Dirty tricks is when they start putting shit in the game. Um, they were writing anonymous letters. They were writing anonymous letters to the Nation of Islam um, to Claire Muhammad. Address to Claire Muhammad, the, the FBI revealing, you know, because they're doing surveillance of the nation. They're revealing that, you know, allegedly Elijah Muhammad had extramarital affairs and produced children, five of them, five children, throughout the uh the nation of Islam. And if his if if if, if uh Elijah Muhammad's followers was to find this out, if it of course would create a deviation. 
um, his his followers would start to question his his integrity and things of that nature. So yeah, the FBI did that. Sent letters to his wife. Um, whenever his niggas and wherever there's niggas present, it's gonna be some shit. It's gonna be some shit. It's gonna be some shit. He said, "Gully Godfather in Harlem covers." Nah, Godfather in Harlem was. That wasn't accurate. That wasn't accurate at all. That was some shit that they put together. I'm a little bit in tune with how things went. I had a brother on here before called Brother Wally. You can look up this video on my channel. Brother Wally. Gully TV Brother Wally. And he was in the nation back then in the 60s and shit like that. He also was serving time. He's from New Jersey. He's from New Jersey. You dig? So, um, yeah, I've had conversations with him. He served time in New Jersey, and that this that which 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 was revealed in the documentary that his assassins were from Newark, New Jersey. Brother Wally's from New Jersey. He's from Newark. So, check out that interview on my channel and shit. Um, Tate, good morning. I'm gonna ship out your uh, your fashion bomb piece this morning. He said, I was around in the 70s when they moved like street niggas in Newark. Newark. I got a chance to see that element. Um, I got I, the early, the early. I went to a, a Savior's Day a few years ago in Detroit at Cobo Hall, right? And I had a girl with me. And, um, you know, she had never seen such a high level of security like you getting pat down by like five different people one person gets pat down patted down like five times they wand you then you go through a metal detector or some shit like that she had never seen seen nothing like that and i was um i was explaining to her i was like yo look at the expression on these guys face you know these the nation of islam the fruit this, we we seen the step show and everything, by the way. I said, look at the expressions on these guys. Now, the younger guys, the younger nation of Islam guys, the fruit, they kind of like smile and they cordial and say, hey, brother, how you doing today? Them older ones, them niggas are leg breakers. Them niggas are leg breakers, yo. Them older, them older niggas that's in the nation of Islam, you know, the fruit, them niggas that's over like, Them niggas that's like 60, 55 to 60, you know, 55, 55 and up, them dudes, um, them niggas ain't nothing to fuck with at all, <laughs> they not nothing to fuck with, um, if you know anything about the Nation of Islam's history, then you know about the black mob from Philly and shit, and you know what type of shit they was, um, you know what type of shit they was into. Uh, I say this to say that the, the the guys, the Nation of Islam, the Fruit Islam guys that come out the seventies and shit like that, they were building a nation during a time of, um, you know, Jim Crow segregation, and 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 and, and you know the racist rule, the racist South. They were building the nation during that shit. So the guys that's coming into the nation. They're a lot more radical and they're a lot more um, in tune with being pro-black. Like, I'm pretty sure a lot of guys from the nation, um, a lot of guys from the Black Panthers was in the Nation of Islam and vi vice versa. I'm pretty sure a lot of dudes that was in the Nation of Islam were Black Panthers as well and shit. My man said they ran greater for... I, I already knew that. He said... <laughs> Do you think the documentary was factual? Just ask him because I haven't watched it. Everybody's going to have... Um, everybody's going to be critical of the documentary, but it was well put together because you didn't just have uh, John Ali in it, who's a very integral piece of the, uh, the story. It wasn't Tynetta, Sister Tynetta. It was somebody else. One of the... I don't know if it was Minister Farrakhan's wife, but one of the high-ranking MGT sisters is on that joint, too, as well as Akbar Muhammad. I grew up hearing Akbar Muhammad speak. He has a warm voice, almost like a Barry White or Teddy Pendergrass. I ain't heard this guy's voice 
seen him since I was a little kid. He the guy that used to come out to the podium before um, Farcon and you know warm up the crowd. And when I heard this guy's voice last night, I think I was bent down rolling a blunt. I heard his voice. I'm like, I hadn't heard it in so long and shit. So um, there's there's people on the documentary who their credentials are 100% solid. 100% solid. Um, there's another uh, thing in the documentary that I know to be 100% true. The guy who did the documentary, who put the documentary together. Good morning, everybody that's here, by the way. Y'all share this live. The, uh, the guy that did the documentary, he was explaining what kept him going. For, for, he was explaining what kept him going with the documentary. Because, like I said, this happened I think 19, in the 1960s. That he uh, was explaining that throughout his travels, he's a Muslim too, and the way it looked, I think he's a Sunni. He's a Sunni, he's a Sunni now. Um, he was saying, he was like, throughout his travels, he started meeting people. You know, you might be at an Id feast or just throughout your travels, when you meet an older Muslim, especially a Sunni, if you meet an older Sunni and they old, it's a good chance they came from the nation of Islam. It's a good chance, like a 90% chance they came from the nation of Islam. The nation of Islam is credited with bringing uh, Islam to North America and shit, facts. Um, when you, like Brother Wali, when you encounter somebody who's older, who, who asks them stories, the guy in the documentary said he was meeting people throughout his travels and he was showing, he went to a, a masjid in Newark, New Jersey or someplace else. That's where the secrets to the murder of Malcolm X lie. The secrets to the murder of Malcolm X are, they lie. The secrets, the truth lies in these masjids. These masjids in the inner cities, especially on the East Coast, probably uh, Chicago too, um, and Detroit, and Detroit. Wherever that, the Nation of Islam has strongholds, go to the Sunni community in these cities. Like, go to the, go to the, to the Sunni masjid and look for somebody who's old. Look around. How long have you been Muslim? I, uh, I've been Muslim since 19. Blase, blase, blah. You was around when Malcolm was around, huh? Yeah. Come here, let me ask you some questions. They'll talk to you. They, 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 they won't get on camera. But different people are going to have different things to say. Um, Brother Wali told me, he was like, I love Malcolm X. He said, uh, Malcolm X pulled me up off the corner with the message and shit. I love uh, Brother Malcolm. He said why he was killed. That's Y'all got to look at the interview called Brother Wali. He said, was the documentary approved by Malcolm's family? I think most of Malcolm's family is dead except for some of his daughters. Um, Betty Shabazz was killed by Malcolm's grandson, he set her on fire or some shit like that. It was terrible. Good morning, JB. Um, J Hood. Gully on the knowledge, I love it. Um, this is our history. We have to be in tune with this. I mean, what the fuck? Incredible documentary. I highly suggest any and everyone who's here, go check that shit out. Go check it out. It's a bad motherfucker. It's the truth. Um, it's the truth about a chain of events that killed one of our greatest leaders. And to think about it, when you think about it, it happens a long. It happened a long time ago, but. Some of his assassins could still be on the streets. Some of his assassins could still be amongst us. Ain't that crazy? Some of his assassins could still be present. Yeah. And I'm willing to bet that some of his assassins are Sunni Muslims now. That's the path that Malcolm X was telling the nation was the right way to go. So, uh, you know, whoever pulled the trigger... They can't be at peace with themselves on no level. Um, he said it's called the murder. It's called the murder of Malcolm X. 
It's called The Murder of Malcolm X. And it, that picture of Thomas Hagen disturbed me. He looked like an evil motherfucker. Um, when you see some shit like this, when you see some shit like this, it, 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 it upsets you because we got issues that we deal with as a people. And y'all took the time to construct, plan, and execute the murder of a black man. Just don't make sense. How was killing Malcolm X? How was that? Um, what did that do in terms of the 16th Street Baptist Church? Killing Malcolm X. What did that do in terms of that? Oh, it was mentioned on the documentary that not... Martin Luther King, nobody else, nobody else. The Nation of Islam and Elijah Muhammad were under surveillance more than any um, group. I don't want to say terror group, religious group in the United States. J. Edgar Hoover had a personal problem. He was a very rotten, evil ass devil. I've never heard anything good about him. Even when white people speak of him, they like cringe and turn their face. He's a very rotten dude and shit. Colleen Washington says, it disturbed my spirit all weekend. I want to know who okayed the hit from the New Jersey mosque. Mm, mm, mm. Who killed Malcolm X is the title. Hoover was a blade. <laughs> Elijah Muhammad Jr. put the hit out on Malcolm X It was mentioned that uh, one of his sons hated Malcolm X One of Elijah Muhammad's sons hated Malcolm X And there was, I learned a new word last night, visceral As soon as I heard it, I went and dug, um, looked at the, the definition It's how I build my vocabulary But I was, it was saying that the um. The minister in Newark, New Jersey, was in prison with Elijah Muhammad, and they were very close. His name was Minister John, maybe Smith. No, his name was John. It's a bunch of rotten fucking Johns in the nation back then. Um, said the minister in Newark, New Jersey, had a visceral hate of Malcolm X. Visceral means deep, deep hatred of Malcolm X. It's a shame. Um, I didn't know that, uh, I didn't know that Newark, New Jersey had a huge, huge Muslim population, huge body. They said even to this day, if you encounter a black, you can't, they said you can't encounter a black family in Newark, New Jersey who don't have Muslims, you know, in their family or a part of their family tree. Somebody in that family. If it's the Jones family in Newark, New Jersey, somebody in the Jones family is a Muslim. You dig? I didn't know. He said the whole city. He said the whole city Muslims. Um, uh, I read a book called Dutch. And it was depicted. It was by Terry Woods. I'm sure some of y'all read Dutch. Incredible book. It was depicted in New Jersey. Um, I think Dutch was from New Jersey. The character Dutch was from New Jersey. Shit. Malcolm made his own bed, bro. Um, Malcolm did violate protocol. It was on the documentary last night. He was silenced. He was asked not. He was warned and asked not to say anything about. John F. Kennedy. He was um, silenced for 90 days. During a Q&A, he answered a question about the uh, murder of John F. Kennedy. And that probably sealed his fate right there. Shit. My man says, most real niggas from the East Coast are Muslims. I don't know if you can be a real nigga and a Muslim at the same time. For Fairlane, I was in Essex County with one of them. They cleaned up a murder scene and had a party there with bullets still in the walls and shit like that. That made absolutely no sense. So, um, yeah, the New York Police Department, they weren't concerned with solving that murder. 
Good morning, everybody. I've been 30 minutes in. We're here uh, discussing the murder of Malcolm X on, on Netflix. Make sure y'all check that shit out. Gully, don't forget the Moorish Science Temple started here in Newark. Is that right? They also had um, they had some Muslim um, bank robbers in Newark back in the day. They was in Feds Magazine. I can't remember their name and shit. These niggas was like paramilitary they wasn't fucking around, but they was bank robbers. Notorious, too. Farrakhan did Dr. Collard the same way. That's not how that hasn't been substantiated. Uh, J Alpha, man, it, it be, it, it, it's like that sometime, man. They don't be wanting the message to get out. My channel is a little different from everyone else's and shit. You're not going to get no conversation this morning about Malcolm X. You're not going to get no history of Malcolm X this morning from no other channel. You don't get what y'all been getting. Who got their chain snatched, who's snitching, Alpo, and a bunch of other bullshit that don't mean nothing and shit. I, um, I don't want to play a part in that shit. That's why um, the way I'm navigating, the way I'm piloting this channel... Y'all seen this obviously changed and shit. There's way too many people um, on the internet now. Way too many people in front of cameras. There's way too many people trying to cover the same type of topics. I ain't with it, man. I'm constantly striving for perfection and originality. <clears throat> Gully, not to go off topic, but can you speak about them kids jumping their basketball coach in Essex County when you get a chance? I seen that shit. That meant... That made no sense. And what's funny is if the coach would have did anything, he'd have got an assault case on a kid and shit. Um, I played basketball. I ain't never had a coach I wanted to jump on. I might have. They might have pissed me off or upset me temporarily and shit. But when you see shit like that, man, that's a reflection that the world is going crazy. When you have children... Who would jump on and uh, you know posse up and jump on an, uh, an authority figure? It just makes no sense at all. It makes no sense at all. Peace, peace, peace. You got time to be playing, man. Let me see Jordan Tower cover this topic. I doubt it. Everyone in Newark know what happened. What you think about the cop shooting in the Bronx? I think homeboy wanted to go back to jail. Peace. Yo, Gully, what's up, bro? Good morning to you. How you doing this morning? Chilling, man. This Tiger, man. This who? Just sending you a shout-out. Oh, 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 oh. Long time no see, my nigga. How you been? Good, 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 man. Are you uh familiar with the... uh? The documentary they got out on Malcolm X on Netflix. Malcolm X? Nah, nah. I, I didn't. I didn't. I read the book, but I never. Uh, if you never seen the documentary. if you read a lot of us that did time and shit like that, read the book. Great book. If you get a chance, man, check out his document. They got a documentary called "Who Killed Malcolm X." It's raising a lot of eyebrows on the internet. You ain't gonna. This ain't gonna be the only place that you hear this discussion. Um, right. it, it's gonna eventually. This is gonna grow. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh good morning to you. I'm working, man. I appreciate you. I'm in tune with what y'all doing over there. I, I watched the show. I know where you at. I ain't um <laughs> Yeah, I'm hitting, man. Yo, I seen you going back and forth to Harlem and all that too, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate I got you. got family up there and shit. I'll be up there working. Um keep me in tune with what y'all got going on, man. Um China Mac. You know, we probably can make that happen. I'm still interested in that. Yes. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here, bro. Yep. Appreciate your call, homie. All right, Gully. One. Gully, I did time at SCI Chester, and 80% of the jail was Muslim. That's facts. That's Pennsylvania shit. Uh, them cities, Philadelphia and them cities around Philadelphia, Norristown, Chester, um, Redding, all of them, like the Islam strongholds. Gully, we've been through this. The New Jersey Star Ledger did a story on a killer back in 2001 when he died. I can send you the link. I love to read that. I love to see it. Um, there's a famous famous attorney named Ben Kunstler. 
who he's on the documentary. The guy who did the documentary, he did his thing, and he 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 says that the identities of the four assassins were revealed in the late seventies by Thomas Hagen, the one that you know they caught at the scene. He was shot in the leg by one of um, Malcolm X bodyguards, and they damn near whooped him to death on the scene. But he was like the one that they caught. Uh, according to him, the other two guys that was arrested with him, they had nothing to do with it. I don't know if you can believe him. I mean, anybody, anytime a nigga get caught, he gonna try to take the whole case anyway. So, anybody that had a hand in murder at Malcolm X, you gonna have to deal with that shit one day if you're not dealing with it now. I was in the airport in Philadelphia, everybody. Habit beers. He said the gu- the gully the lawyer name was Bo- Bruce Cutler. Nah, 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 nah. It was, it was Kunstler. Um, Bruce Cutler. That was John Gotti's attorney. That was John Gotti's attorney, bro. Good morning, everybody. I appreciate y'all coming through, man. This is our history. He said, I believe it. They was from Harlem. Nah, they said the assassins. Temple Se- Temple Number Seven in Harlem had a hand in it. Of course. That's where uh, Malcolm X was operating uptown. But it's been revealed that the shooters were from Newark, New Jersey. I think this has been known for quite some time now. Shit. As a matter of fact, I think it was Feds Magazine had one of the alleged shooters, alleged shooters, on the front of their magazine one time. He's a light skinned brother with like, I think he might have had like green eyes or brown eyes or some shit. Southward Brazy, I appreciate you. He said, nah, the two innocent men. How do you know that they were innocent, though? I remember New Jersey Drive, dude was like, say, I I ain't know what it meant back then. (laughs) Grimy Brick City Fools. Good morning to everybody that's here. Subscribe to the channel, The Real Gully TV. Got on early this morning, man, trying to get the day started. Um, I've been going heavy on my fitness. I got a video that I'm going to upload to y'all. Right when I get out of here, I got to edit it. But I'm going to just say something about it. Did y'all see that video of the chick that fell from 40 feet? The stripper? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> How do you feel about the old heads that stay in the nation afterwards? That would be my mother, father. Um, the people that raised me, they had their own reasons. I think mainly, sometimes people don't want to be wrong about, especially if they believed in something wholeheartedly and pa- if they're passionate about something. They might not want to believe that the Easter Bunny ain't real and shit like that. The alleged assassin with the shotgun died as an old man in Newark about a year ago. Nobody even coughed on him. Payroll, good morning. Like it is with Gil Noble did an interview with one of the assassins years ago. It's on YouTube. Muslims are the drug kingpins in Jersey. Interesting, interesting. Um, it seemed like a lot of people with criminal backgrounds feel that they can be a criminal and profess their love for a loss of panel with the Isla. It just don't go like that. It don't go like that. Big visuals, I can prove it. Good morning, Payroll. I ain't heard from Payroll. I need some of that hip-hop from you, man. Um, shout out to DC. I have a whole playlist that I constructed for DC. It's probably like 20-something videos, man. All DC, man. You could put that shit on in the barbershop and let that shit rip. You know what I mean? If you're at home cleaning up and you want some good content on television, go to my YouTube channel, pull up the Washington, D.C. playlist. Let that shit rip. It's all crack. Do you know Moses Powell? Nope. Shout out to my family, Akbar Prey. Um, Brother Wali, who I interviewed on this very channel, 
um, look up the video, Kicking It With Brother Wally. He was, he's from New Jersey. He was around the nation during this period. And he has some very interesting things to say. Moses Powell, my grandfather, he trained most of the NOI killers. I don't dispute none of that, and I'm not trying to big up the fact that there were killers present in the Nation of Islam, but it's common knowledge that the Nation of Islam, he said niggas be E-man in jail, but got bricks when he get home. It's common knowledge that the, um, oh, common knowledge that the nation of islam brought um islam to the inner cities right it's also common knowledge that the members of the nation of islam primarily came from prison um like malcolm x malcolm x was uh you know exposed to the nation and became a part of the nation of islam in prison so um if you got an organization that's building their future and, and their brand on the backs of convicted felons it might be some shit involved it might be some shit involved i mean if you look at the, the philadelphia black mob and you've seen some of the shit that them niggas was doing those weren't everyday people them were don't them niggas was don't those weren't everyday people them niggas was bat shit crazy before they even put the kufi on and shit you dig what i'm saying word Malcolm did like 10 years in the can. He was reading heavily. He said, this is the media we need right now. History, the dumb shit got to go. Um, I get turned the fuck off when I log into youtube man don't y'all y'all get bombarded by all that bullshit when you see all that bullshit come through don't you like damn it's bad man it's bad man got me not even wanting to participate in this shit if my shit don't have no 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 fucking um if it's not potent if the subject ain't potent if it's not riveting if it ain't if you if i'm not giving you this with what, what y'all getting right now then I ain't gonna get online. I ain't gonna get online, man. For real. Uh, it's a mess. It wasn't like this a couple of years ago. It wasn't like this a couple of years ago. Um, you actually could get on the internet and, you know, check out a video about basketball, you know, so that a, a content creator did about basketball. You might can check out a nice piece by Info Minds. I respect that. I respect something that's dope. When it's good, it's good. You dig what I'm saying? That's not what we getting right now. Shit, we getting a bunch of bullshit. We're getting a bunch of bullshit. Um, bullshit. I be like, damn. That's all these niggas do is fight. So <laughs> all these niggas do is make videos, man. Getting online, beefing, talking about other niggas, calling niggas out. Nigga shit has came. To, the nigga shit is here. It's online. It's online. Luke Keys, that's what's up. He said, well-rounded topics, not that gossip bullshit. I couldn't be a part of it. I couldn't sit in front of this camera with y'all and talk about nothing. Um, a lot of these a lot of these platforms, they hope for y'all to carry the narrative. They cut on their camera, say a few things, and then they just let y'all take over and shit. You know what I mean? He said, niggas ain't learn shit. And y you know what it tells me? When I see, it just tells me that they're not intelligent. Like, when I see these guys on the internet, it just tells me that they not intelligent. They were nobody before YouTube, and they damn sure ain't about no money and shit. Um, niggas that's used to having things, they move differently. They move differently. Um, and a lot of them is getting high, you could tell. A lot of these niggas was getting high. Got getting high and they, you know, they got it in their background. You don't have to see a motherfucker with the pipe in his hand. Or you don't have to see a nigga sniffing coke to know that he, he a junkie and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could see that shit. Um, but, yeah. He said they're talking about death row and Pac 24-7 on Vlad TV. 
a lot of these uh, platforms don't have any legs and shit. They have nothing else to, to talk about. Vlad ain't going to talk about this. He don't have no expertise. You dig what I'm saying? He don't have no knowledge of this topic and shit. Maybe that's why he hired Lord Jamar. But, again, you can't get this shit nowhere else. He said, Gully, quick question. How come some have a fresh, shaved, clean face and others the opposite? The, the, the guys that you're seeing with the clean face, no hair on their face, that's the nation of Islam. That's the fruit of Islam. They carry it like the military. They don't rock no hair on their face and shit. The ones that you see with the beards, those are the Sunni Muslims. They um, embrace the Quran and Sunnah, and they follow the example Left by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, Prophet Muhammad let his beard grow long and kept his mustache short, and that's a practice that you see amongst Sunni Muslims. A lot of piggybacking off the same topics, crap facts. South War Brazy, it's against the Quran and Sunnah though. What's against the Quran and Sunnah? A long beard can be a weakness in a fight. Yeah, get your shit ripped off. Omega Sunlight, I appreciate your donation. High quality content, impeccable dribble. Yes. Make sure at some point today, I promise you, I promise you, highly recommend it. The Murder of Malcolm X on Netflix is the hottest shit on Netflix. You is so much information you can't move and the revelations, the revelations. And to think that this shit was going down during a time when black people were oppressed. Malcolm X got killed when niggas was still getting hit with police dogs. They were still spraying us with hoses and attacking, you know, the turning the German shepherds loose on niggas when Malcolm X was killed and shit. You know what I mean? That that's what makes it terrible and shit. If y'all got strength to construct a murder plot and pull the shit off, y'all can fight for the liberation of black people. What the fuck? I mean, Malcolm X was saying that y'all seem like y'all just about talk. That was one of his uh when when the, when the brother got killed in California and and nobody wanted to get busy. That was that was that was that raised the eyebrow with Malcolm X because the things that we're saying, we're not living by it. We're not living by it. Let me find out that this shit is just for corporate gain or this is a business. Because, again, the, the, the nation don't pay any taxes, man. All, all that money that they take in, that shit taking care of some motherfucking body. That shit taking care of somebody. Did the Nation of Islam ever collaborate with the Black Panther Party? I'm pretty sure they did. Gully, you ever see a documentary on Clarence Yvonne called The Black uh, Godfather? Absolutely. I watched all the I watched all the documentaries on great black men. Quincy Jones, Clarence Avant, Malcolm X. There's uh, there's others. Um, yeah, there's others. I be wanting to know. How did you get in the position that you in? How did you become great? I want to know um, your beliefs, um, your practices, habits. I want to know and shit. I want to know how somebody who looked like me, mama looked like me, can establish a legacy straight up. Honorable Elijah Muhammad had too much dirt that Malcolm found out about. He said when he made that comment about Kennedy, it was the last straw. The last motherfucking straw. The coup de gras. That's the only thing that I have. I'm in. I'm in out outright disagreement with in terms of uh, the whole Malcolm X situation when he was silenced about John F. Kennedy. Malcolm X did something similar to Gail King did. Malcolm X did something similar to what Gail King just did, yo. Yeah. It was it, it was similar. Bad timing. Speaking um harshly or negative or trying to portray a neg paint a negative image of someone who's beloved, who's beloved by by the people. You know what I mean? Kobe Bryant wasn't, wasn't just loved by black people. All types of people like, you know, was on a Kobe Bryant shit. But 
He said he paid the price too. Yeah, um, I think it's common knowledge amongst um, anybody that know the, about the Nation of Islam know that they don't play though, straight up. Um, especially in regards to what Malcolm did. Let me tell you again, let me explain to you the depth of what he did. If we're a brand, if we're the nation of Islam, right? If we're a brand, we're operating. We don't want anything going on that's going to rock the boat, period. We don't want anything that, if we can control it, we don't want anything going on that's, that's, that's going to rock the boat. Malcolm X rocked the boat. Straight up. He did. Someone close to Malcolm said he didn't get the memo to not talk about JFK. How? How was that possible? How was that possible? How was that possible? Um, Elijah Muhammad, I'm pretty sure, I wasn't there. I'm pretty sure he would send a directive out like that to him in a manner that he would get the message like that I, that that I can't go with that one and shit boom, boom, boom. Let me get my can I roll up yeah I can roll up let me get a lighter give me one second though everyone the dribble is in the building we're in here keeping this shit authentic and uh malcolm x is the topic malcolm was playing chess with elijah he lost terribly salute to newark in the chat room how do you tell a grown man what he can talk about you can tell a man what he could talk about if he's representing your brand um malcolm x is a part of the nation of islam he's a minister in the nation of islam you can't get your ass on that podium and say we hate. You can't get on the podium and say, let me see. You can't get on a, on a podium. For instance, like this. This is what Malcolm did. Let's put it in terms of today. Elijah Muhammad said, yo, don't you say nothing about gay people. Don't you, don't, yo, you bet not say nothing else about gay people right we the nation of Islam we have nothing against gay people this, this is hypothetical and Malcolm X turn around and say something anyway it reflects on the leader of the organization Elijah Muhammad he told him these people love John F. Kennedy right Non-believer, absolutely. These people love John F. Kennedy. Do not bring that upon this business, this brand that we've built. You dig? Malcolm refused to support what he came to know was, was not right. After his uh, pilgrimage to Mecca... I can't remember the year. He was exposed to Muslims of all nationalities and shit, right? He came back and basically said, our whole mantra of the black man being God and the white man being devil, the white man can't be the devil because I just came from Mecca and I, I, I prostrated next to white people. Peace. Good morning to you. I appreciate your call, my nigga. Uh, have you checked out the documentary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You off to here? Overseas, overseas, Europe. Overseas, you know what I mean? Dubai, on the camels and shit. We gon', we gon' get it run, man. 
man, you know, so I'll be seeing you everywhere, man. You the dribble job, man. We appreciate you, man. No doubt. I appreciate your call. Right. Hey, did, did you get a chance to check out this documentary that we speaking about? Yes, sir. That's what I'm calling it about. Yes, sir. First and foremost, I, I grew up in the nation, too, in Buffalo, New York. Okay. You know, my, uh, my uncles joined around 88. My mom joined in 92. And myself, as a man, I joined in 2011. Got you. Now, I end up checking out around 2013 once the Scientology thing got around. But we're not going to talk about that. But I'm just like, you know, that's what right, I checked out. Right, right, right. Okay, okay, okay. But um, just like you and I know, man, uh, it's intricacies in the nation. Right. A person really has to be in the nation to really understand, you know, what Malcolm went through. Right. Um, the one thing I say about the Malcolm X situation is I think that uh, Malcolm exposed a lot in a speech on February 15th, 1965. Mm. What's the name of the Everybody speech? Everybody should check that out. It's called A Worldwide Revolution Is Going On. Y'all heard that? What he said is he never seen Elijah more scared ever in his life to the day he seen Kennedy get killed. And that's why I said he was playing chess with him because when the brother got beat up and murdered in L.A., right. Malcolm was really affected by that because he felt that that's what the FOI was for. To, 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 to uh, combat shit like that, right? Right. To, to go head up with the, with the LAPD, the NYPD, the Chicago PD, anybody who definitely put their hands on an NOI member and a member of the FOI he wanted them beat up. And the thing was, the brother was their secretary, but she didn't get his ex yet. Okay. His last name was still Stokes. Got you. I couldn't remember the name. Him, he said, he's not really one of ours, but we're going to stand down. Wow. Malcolm was like, no, no, we're not doing that. So anyway, like it's going to stand down, you're going to get my followers killed. That's what, that's what he told Malcolm. Right. So Malcolm got tight. And uh, from then, Malcolm and him started seeing different ways, but Malcolm stayed loyal. Now, with the Kennedy thing, I just feel like, look, when I say play chess, I think because when, when Malcolm felt like, why are you protecting this devil? We preaching the fall of America. Right. We preaching this white man has a day coming for him, and you telling me, be, be mindful of their feelings? Malcolm has been preaching so much strength scaring them crackers that he wasn't about to stop that right and, and Elijah and John Ali John Ali is the one who put the statement out to the national public that Malcolm was suspended okay Elijah I know Elijah didn't come on TV because you know he wasn't feeling for that Elijah wasn't speaking that publicly John Ali is the one who came on national television and told them that Malcolm is suspended. So it's personal between John Ali and Malcolm and X. And Malcolm X. Exactly. When I seen him, I got this uh you know, this 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 model that I live by. It's I've said it on my platform several times. Vibes are stronger than pictures. When I seen John right. Ali last night, my body went through he look, he look, he look weird, right? My body went through changes. It was just like, like devil. It was like devil. I'm it, it, and it, they said his name. It, it, my man, look, I, it raised me off the couch. I'm like, it's him. Like I thought he would. I thought he would be dead. I thought he would. It, it was a long time ago, so I assumed him to had probably passed away. But I'm like, I've been hearing this dude's name since I was a little kid. Let me tell you a secret.